Hello guys, this is Alex Padilla, live from Milan. I'm with Ale Tura. Say hello, Ale. Hi, hi. Ale Tura works from the Milan office. She is our lovely fashion editor based here, and we just finished the super intense but very fun Milan Fashion Week and PT Wong. The main train, the main, the main trend, sorry, is the fact that it's so hot and we <laughs> melted throughout. Did we, Ale? Oh my gosh, yes. So we started melting in Florence, but Florence, apart from the extreme temperatures, we um, saw very interesting trends. We saw a super dynamic PT woman, and obviously we saw the guest designers. Talk to us a little bit about what you thought of Ale or PT Womo. I think that PT is always extremely interesting because it's the start of the season of just right after London and you can really see what's going on in the season. Um, I think that the fair itself was really good. We saw uh -huh. a lot of brands, a lot of new upcoming brands. Uh -huh. At the same time, uh, Tommy, the figure with the figure edition was amazing. Yes, you guys, Tommy Hilfiger was there himself. And we spoke to him, we were the first ones to speak to him, he was so nice, Absolutely. he was so excited to be there. What's happening with Tommy Jeans is amazing. The fact that a 90s brand has come so fast into it and dominating again. One thing that he said to us, and you guys should remember this, is that they're going to keep Tommy Jeans very exclusive with very limited edition runs. So if you see a Tommy Jeans jacket, just buy it. Just buy it because we didn't. We, <laughs> <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> we forgot, and then it was sold out. Anyway, so moving on. Thank Absolutely. you for talking about Tommy. I mean, let's talk a little bit. Talk about um, J W Anderson. J W Anderson was one of the guest designers at PT Womo. So talk to us about it. Uh, J.W. Anderson asked us to go in a very unconvenient location, but an extremely beautiful. There were mosquitoes too. Yeah, it took 30 minutes to go to this amazing villa, but honestly, it's worth it. It was beautiful. It, it was, was beautiful. very like natural. Yes. Real Florence, real Italy. The collection itself, I mean, was good. Mm -hmm. We liked it. Mm -hmm. uh, probably was a little bit too commercial. Well, the truth is that we, he, she and I have these conversations all the time. Um, I think that in the case of Jonathan uh, Anderson, uh, JW, he is ready for a bigger step, maybe. Yeah. And I think that he was trying to show that um, he can go for something that is more everyday. True. Not so True. conceptual. It was a very consistent collection. Consistent. There was a lot of denim. Thank you. Um, <laughs> But there was also a, a lot of plays on all Coca-Cola logos. Yes. That that was so yes. interesting. He and put his face on T-shirts, uh -huh. on sweatshirts, and that was very interesting. Very interesting. Because ironic, it was fun. It was lovely. Um, also, we saw our the other guest designer was um, Off White Virgil. Yes. Yes. That was a very interesting show. Um, we're in our office that explains the people coming back and forth. <laughs> Don't think we're in the middle of no, uh, a, no. a, a bar or anything. This is the Milan <laughs> office of Women's Way Dead. Go ahead. Uh, Off-White, okay. Off-White gave us a huge show. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can say huge because huge. It, was, it was huge. Yeah, it was huge. Uh, Virgil teamed up with Jenny Holzer, who, as you know, is a major artist in New York. Yeah. Uh, they did all these amazing projections on Palazzo Pitti, which is probably the, mm -hmm. one of the most important buildings in Florence. Palazzo Pitti was amazing. Yeah, it was nice, it was hot, it but was I mean, hot, it, it was, was the middle of the night. I, I think it was emotional. I mean, there was something really nice about that. Uh, the collection, I have to say, was really good, I think. I thought so too. I mean, things that you should remember about a collection like this is that Virgil reinterpreted a new take on tailoring. Yes. Tailoring was reinvented and introduced for him. I think that he did it in honor of PT. Yeah. Being such a sartorial That's city. That's what he said. That's what he said. And, and it was a very interesting strategy, I think. And, yeah, I agree. And, and it was lovely. But you still had the everyday Virgil pieces. Absolutely. You had the streetwear, the, the urban attitude. Uh, the touch of uh, high tech, uh, yes. of activewear, mm -hmm. 
I think it was really good. I think it was really good. I thought so too. I mean, um, the fair itself um, yes. was um, full of trends as well. Some of the trends that we saw was uh, light, feather light outerwear. Absolutely. We had these lightweight parkas with nylon and mm. like very light cotton. Very, very, very nice. Very good. We loved it. Um, but like Welter Shelter was one of the brands we started yes. at the fair. Yes. And we suggest you to go and take a look to their website. It's very interesting. Yes, um, but then there was a lot of use of shirting fabrics throughout yes. in jackets and in coats, things that you would normally don't use. There was also a lot of oversized needs. We saw... Um, that was huge. 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 What else did we see? Oh, we had the pastel sneakers, Alex. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pastel sneakers. We, we love the trend. We, love we the do trend. love the trend. But as an overall, it was a very strong PT that happened, when was this? Last week. Last week. And then on Friday, we came to Milan for Milan Fashion Week and we started with Zenia. What do you think of the Zenia show? Honestly, I think it was really good. Yeah. Uh, I think it was a big show. Zenia is a big company. It's probably leading the the crew of the big brands that still want to be in Milan during Fashion Week because right. as you know many major brands decide to do co-ed shows during the women's season. Right, you should bring, let's let's talk about this for yeah. a second because now we had we had Bottega before and Gucci yeah. that they had migrated to women's week in September but Jill now, Sander, now with Jill Sander, yes. now Missoni too, so, Etro, so I think that there is a movement and I don't know what's gonna happen but we should stay tuned, there is a huge migration to Women's Fashion Week to show both genders at once, yes. so um, yes. I don't know what that means. I mean, if things will change, I think, both in terms of editorial and in terms of commercial for buyers, it will be hard for the retailers to have all the team in Europe or if they come from the American States during the women's season. We will see what's going to happen. At the same time, we are honestly uh, going to the showrooms to see the men's collection anyway because mm -hmm. we think it's super important to be ahead of the season. I think what's really As we did with Jill, yeah. I think what's today. what was really positive. I think from um, having some of the bigger brands like Gucci um, not showing, I think it allowed um, time and space for other brands to emerge and to take center stage. In the case of MSGM, for example, yes. we yes. have been loving. Massimo Giorgetti, is that how you say his name? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. We, uh, we've been loving his, his collection, but um, this season around, it was excellent. I mean, it was in, to the, in yesterday's covers yes. for Women's Way Daily. Um, and I think that um, he's definitely leaving his mark on uh, Milan Fashion Week. What can you say about him, Alan? I mean... He is bleach blonde now, by the way. He bleaches Yeah, hair. and it looks very good. Yeah, yeah, my, 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 my do it. My <laughs> do it. <laughs> I mean, we really like the collection. Um, I think uh, Massimo is growing as a designer uh, and the brand is growing with him. Uh, the collection was really about the streetwear. We, I mean, that has always been a big... We right. played a big part mm -hmm. in his collections. But I think it was a little bit more sophisticated. Right. There were like interesting elements and the fact that Liam Gallagher's son was there, I think, played you a guys, part yeah. in the Liam Gallagher's son. Thing. Oasis is having a total re a moment, I think. I mean, yes. I agree. But the things that you should know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, um, <laughs> no, no. Um, I think things that you should know about um, that is that um, there was a lot of Hawaiian florals in his collection. Yes. That I think that Hawaiian florals are a big trend. Absolutely, this, yes. For the season. There was also obviously... Take a look at Numero 21. You will see and then them. that is what's shifting to the next thing. Numero 21. Also, I know one thing before we leave. M um, MSGM opened the collection with tonal white. White on white. Yes. And I think that that is a huge trend also. Huge. That is tonal white. It's a big. It, a lot of designers have started the collections that way. 
My <laughs> question is, it's great on the catwalk. It's gonna be great in the street. Ice cream movement. I can wear all white head to toe. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. If Alice Badia says you can, go ahead. You can do it. You might look like a bride, but um, <laughs> you can pull it off. So anyway, um, sorry. Another thing, sorry, um, is that uh, numero 21. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about numero 21 and about the designer. I don't know yes. if you're familiar with number 21. Uh, first of all, numero 21 did his first show in the new location. I mean, they both did amazing at quarter and they, they, they did the show there. It was extremely nice and very like in sync mm -hmm. with the whole collection. Right. Um, the, what I like of Numero 21 is that it's very contemporary, it's very urban, but at the same time, I can always see the delicate touch of Alessandro. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was born as a women's designer. Yes. Uh, he's famous for his uh, sensual, uh, innocent aesthetic. Yeah. And I think he's really able to integrate that into his, women's, his menswear collections. I think yeah. it's very interesting. In, in the case of numero, number 21, um, there was, the inspiration was Bruce Weber images. Yes. There was a lot of California dreaming. Absolutely. That I mean, this, California was pretty big all over yes. the places. I mean, it was all over the places. Like, yeah, there is the retro California. Um, that, but in the case of Alessandro, there was also um, the use of like super bright colors. There was the, this bright yellows that I love. And yes. the placing of images. I think we've been seeing a lot of embellishment, either the use of photography or extreme florals or uh, painterly details as a way of making clothes unique. Absolutely. I think. Absolutely. So let's talk for a second. I think silhouettes yeah. are kind of simple. We yes. are seeing simple, wearable silhouettes, mm -hmm. and designers are try really trying to play with embellishments yes. to make some fun. Agree. I think that um, there were another thing that uh, now that I'm looking at you, Ali looks very trendy. Get closer to the phone. You see soft pink. Yeah. You can see the soft pink. This is also a big color. Yes, absolutely. We saw it <coughs> everywhere. Absolutely. It's everywhere. And there was this new brand. It's not new, but it's also another street brand. Street, the street is having a big movement here in Milan. It was G. G C D S. GC that is God can't destroy streetwear, correct? Absolutely, yes. I got that right. So um, they, the, the, the designer presented a lot of pink on the yes. runway for men. That was like a very interesting movement. But moving on, we also saw a lot of fanny packs. Oh, as yes. The main bag of the season is nothing new, but it's really now yeah. hitting really hard. Um, we started. I mean, we have to thank Alessandro Michele for the return of the backpack. Yeah. We are seeing a lot of that. I mean, yeah. up to you. It's up to you, but I love a fanny pack. Um, in the case of Prada, Prada used it as a main statement Absolutely. throughout. And then we saw it in all the different young designers that they use it as well as a level of embellishment or even just as an accessory. Um, we love Fendi. Fendi is in our cover today. Something that it seems ridiculous to talk about because, you know, we all know ties. But there is a return of the tie. Tie has not been present in runway for so long. But uh, Sylvia Fendi presented a collection that really glamorized the tie once again. So can you talk to us about that collection? Uh, first of all, uh, today is a sad day for the Fendi company because as you read on Women's Fair Daily, uh, Carla Fendi died. Uh, she was one of the sisters who established the brand, so yes. I think we have to remember her. Uh, she, she actually had a great life and we really have to thank her for giving us such an interesting brand. So going back to fashion, because that's, we are here for that, Mm -hmm. uh, the collection was really, um, I think it was really in sync with the times, but at the same time, uh, it was very elegant. But, I mean, there was that like street elegance, which yeah. I think is very, is very interesting. And I mean, there were all these colors, uh, the, the new suits, uh, the new business suit, mm -hmm. um, which was very, very cool, I think. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the accessories. Yes. Because, you know, we all look at Fanny also for the accessories. Absolutely. 
I, I think, mean, it's a great moment for the, for the it's a great moment for the brand. The Martinez brothers were at the show. Everybody loves the Martinez brothers right now. I, I love think, the Martinez brothers. I think Fendi is really understanding what people want and what people like. I think that it's something about um, the overarching message of that collection. We've been seeing men going into a leisure time forever. They've been, you know, hiking, surfing, skating. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love not to work, but um, it is interesting when you see that tendency towards going back to work as yeah. an aesthetic. Absolutely. She's presenting a collection for a man that wants to join the workplace, but not look like he's wearing his father's suit. So I think that in that case, she reinvented super light fabrics in suitings, basically transparent, burn, yeah. basically, in trenches, in blazers, in separates. You saw also the oversized tie, something that your grandfather would wear, but very elegant, even suspenders, a 1920s feel at yeah. times. It was sort of very interesting. I really want you to guys check the Fendi show. Yeah. yeah. I think that as an overall, how long have we been doing this, by the way? Do you know how much time? Do you guys know how much time we've been doing this? Hmm. Okay. So, um, I think that as an overall, what, things that we need to remember about Milan Fashion Week, and by the way, tomorrow we start in Paris, um, <clears throat> things that we need to remember in terms of trend. White on white is a big trend, as well as the pale pink. We saw a lot, oh, one thing we need to remember is the retro 1950s shirt is the key shirt of the Absolutely. moment. It appeared everywhere. We saw it as a boxy, white bo color. Boxy, yes. spread color. The traditional 1950s shirt, we saw them obviously a Prada, there were tons because she did a whole 1950s sort of yes. greaser moment, but we saw them at Ferragamo. Um, I thought what was interesting is the talent of Mr. Ripley our favorite movie, we basically mold our life after that movie. Um, the talent Mr. Ripley was quoted by two designers yes. um, as one inspiration. So I think that we need to remember that as um, something to bear in mind. So the 1950s shirt was definitely there. Absolutely. We always see a lot of plaids. We see always a lot of vertical stripes and very heavy vertical stripes. Yeah. We saw that at PT Womo as well. I think that also the combination of different star the different stripes. Right. You know, that was kind of interesting. The oversized knits. Oh the oversized knits are everywhere. Yes. And if you want to push it over the shoulder and do a little flash dance situation, be my guest because we yes. saw some of the shoulder sweaters. And also we saw as an overall this feeling of youthfulness and innocence mm -hmm. and fun and happy that we are in desperate need of. The clear example of it was Marnie. Yes. Marnie was such a great collection. Yeah, we loved it. Really, it made you happy. I also liked that with the invitation, they gave you little toys. I got a duck and we baptized the duck, Fernando. Yeah, I love Fernando. Fernando I, is the you know. coolest duck. He's coming with me to Paris to keep me company. I'll show it to you when I get to Paris. But um, as an overall, that collection was great. Don't you think? Yeah, I mean, there is this, there is, there was this childish factor which made the collection mm -hmm. very appealing. I mean, we still have to understand the Francesco Rizzo. I think it's just the Francesco second, Rizzo is a designer. The new, the new, the new creative director is just the second collection, men's collection he does for the brand. Um, but there is something very intriguing about him and about the the, the, the look which he which is delivering. Yeah. Um, what we loved about the show, I think, it was that effortless elegance. Yes. Which, we, which infused the, the the whole show. The proportions were kind of like twisted. Yeah. I mean, it was intriguing. Uh, I highly recommend to check it out. Yeah, go to www.com, go into Runway and check the Marnie show. Again, the use of ties was throughout yes. as not only a styling trick, but something really like 
a, like a good message and also the kind of shirting fabrics and shirts being decomposed and reworked we saw some patchwork trends as well yes but um i think that it's been as an overall a very interesting and different season in milan absolutely i think that there's um the beginning of a new era here i think and yes. that for menswear it's very hopeful very happy and very uh, i mean we are forgetting about versace I oh mean, my god you versace talk, you talk about happiness i mean i think versace really epitomized that kind of like mm. happy lively feel yeah you know the fact that donatella appeared that delicate sorbet tones and you know the printed shirts very mm -hmm. fluid very masculine yes. but in a very like playful way i think i think i think it was really it, it, it did reflect the spirit of the season and also the logomania continues always there's oh, yeah. so much logomania and uh, in case you forgot what you're wearing it says across your chest in the case of versace it said versace Right? Or Jill Sander. Jill Sander. Or MSG and MSG everywhere. If it's just the M, it's MSGM. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of good. I think you should wear something that says Alex, Alessandra Turra, Alessandra yes. Turra, Alessandra Turra. Ali Turra. Ali Turra, Ali Turra. Ali Turra. Ali Turra. Mine should say the Alex Vadia. The Alex Vadia. So, anyway, I think we're going to leave it here. I'm leaving, unfortunately, Alex oh. staying in Milan. I'm going to miss her terribly, my partner in crime. But I'm going to be in Paris. Yes, you see him a lot in the streets of Paris. Yes, you're going to see me in the streets of Paris. Um, I think that um, Paris is going to be an insane, super fun week. I want you guys to stay really close to www.com. You can follow www.com on Instagram. You can always follow me at the Alex Padilla. But uh, on our Instagram stories, we're full of surprises. We're going to be doing tons of videos, so please stay with us. and. Thank you again. Thank you very much. We'll see Bye. you soon. Bye-bye.